Tanga. Welcome to the English lectures of Gali Classroom. This is the first lecture. Tanga, this is the first lecture in the topic money and credit from CBSE 10th Standard Economics. From CBSE 10th Standard Economics, Chapter 3, Unit chap Chapter 3, Money and Credit. This is the first lecture. What are we going to learn in this lecture, sir? We are going to learn about money, the essential nature of money, how money is used as a medium of exchange. Also, we will learn about the different forms of money in the contemporary world, in the current world, in current India. How is money used? Who is issuing the money? Who is responsible for the money? And who is authorizing this system of exchange? Who is authorizing this system of Exchange. Excellent. Now let us start with what is money? How is money used as a medium of exchange? Before we understand money as a medium of exchange, let us visualize a world where there was no money. In such a world where there is no money, how are you going to do exchange, product exchange? How are you going to do business? We are going to do business by a system called as barter system. What is barter system? Barter system is an exchange of goods which does not need any money. If there is no money, how are you going to exchange goods? We are going to exchange goods by mutual wants. How, what is the idea of mutual wants? Let us go with an example. Let us say there is a farmer. A farmer is producing a lot of wheat. Let us say there is a bookshop. Obviously, he has a lot of books. Let us say the farmer needs books and the bookshop owner needs wheat. Now, the farmer will take his wheat and go to the bookshop owner. He will give him wheat. The bookshop owner will get the wheat from the farmer and give him back books. Because both the bookshop owner and the farmer have mutual wants. And this is coinciding. There is a coincidence of mutual wants. Both of them have need of each other's produce both of them have needs for each other's produce such a situation is called as double coincidence of wants the double coincidence of wants is an essential condition for the barter system to work in order to exchange goods in order to get everything you need double coincidence of wants is an essential idea let me give another example for double coincidence of wants let us say there is a cobbler who wants wheat and a farmer who wants shoes. Since a cobbler is producing shoes, the farmer will simply take some of his wheat, go to the cobbler and give him wheat and exchange it for shoes which the farmer needs. Which the farmer needs. Sir, what if the cobbler does not need wheat? So the cobbler does not need wheat. In that case, let us say the cobbler got wheat from some other farmer. Right now, he is not in need of any wheat. The cobbler will not give the farmer shoes because nothing of value is happening to him. Because of this, when there is no double coincidence of wants, the barter system absolutely fails. The barter system absolutely fails. Okay, sir. Also, the barter system is complicated and time consuming. It is not an easy task to locate somebody who has the need for something you have. You have something. Let us say I am a farmer. I have wheat. It is very hard for me to find somebody who has this specific need. A, a cobbler who has a need for wheat. A bookshop owner who has a need for wheat. A porter who has the need for wheat and exchange each and everything with wheat. It is a cumbersome process, time consuming process and an unnecessarily complicated process. So how are we overcoming this barter system? We are using a concept called as money. What is money? Money is a crucial value intermediate in the exchange process. So when you are producing goods, you can exchange it for the value intermediate which is called as money. Now I have money. Using this money, I can exchange it for goods. Whatever I want. I can go to a cobbler and buy his shoes using money. I can go to a potter and buy his pots and pans using money. I can go to a bookshop, buy books using money. 
So money is playing as a crucial value intermediate in the exchange of goods. Money is simplifying both the purchase and sales of goods. Money is eliminating double coincidence of wants, which is a necessary feature for barter system. So money in essential is eliminating the barter system. The next thing you will ask is, sir, what were the things that were used as money in the olden days? In the olden days in India, grain was used as money. Also cattle, uh, bullocks and cows were used as money. Slowly, with the metallic ages, in the bronze age, in the iron age, in those periods, we were using gold, silver and copper as money. With respect to whatever metal was famous, and easily available in those periods. With respect to whatever metal was easily available in those periods, we are using those metals, especially gold, silver and copper were used as money. Okay, sir, what about the com contemporary world? What about the scenario right now? What is used as money? Modern forms of money is given as currency. Currency is given in two forms. One is going to be your paper note. The next is going to be your coins. This paper note and coins do not have any value of their own. Here copper had value of its own, gold and silver had value of its own. You can simply take a lot of copper wire and sell it for good value. But here you cannot uh, melt one kilogram of one rupee coin and sell it for some value. It loses its value. Coin loses its value once you start melting it. The paper note does not have value of its own. Sir, then who is giving this value? The paper note's currency has value because it is authorized by the government of India as the medium of exchange, accepted medium of exchange in our country, legal medium of exchange in our country. Okay, sir. Who is responsible for issuing this currency notes? RBI, which is expanded of, which is expanded as Reserve Bank of India. Reserve Bank of India is issuing money on behalf of the government of India. Reserve Bank of India is issuing money on behalf of, of government of India. Now, RBI holds the sole responsibility of issuing money. No other organization or individuals can issue money. So, RBA is controlling how much money right now is in India. It is called as liquid cash. Money that is present as currency notes, not as deposit in banks. Money that is readily available for purchasing anything. Readily available as a medium of exchange is called as liquid cash. So, RBA literally controls the amount of liquid cash that is flowing in India also. RBA plays a very very important role in our banking system. We will study about RBA in depth as and when we are studying about the banking system of India which will form the crux of this unit. When we are studying money and credit, we will also study about the banking system of India. Right. So, uh, what if somebody is refusing this medium of exchange? Let us say I am going to a shop and I am giving him money. Can he refuse me? No. Nobody in India can refuse. Rupees has a medium of exchange. It is the settling. It is used for. Rupee is used for settling transactions in India. So, it cannot be refused. It cannot be legally refused. If somebody is refusing your money, you can go to the court and literally put a case on them saying that they are not accepting. Rupee has the medium of exchange. Okay, what next? Uh, and not, not, you are not carrying your money in your pocket always. You are not having all the money that you have in your home. Right? What are you doing? You are depositing it with bank. Why are you doing it? Essentially, the primary reason is safety. Bank is taking responsibility of the money. You are depositing it with it. The bank is taking responsibility of the money that you are depositing with it. Right? The first reason is safety. So, the customer's money is safe with the bank. Also, the second reason is the money deposited earns healthy interest. So, there is a minimum amount of interest that the bank is providing for the depositor. The minimum amount of interest 
is earned by each and every deposit. Sir, I have deposited a lot of money with the bank. Suddenly there is a need. Can I withdraw this money from the bank? Yes, absolutely. That is why it is called as deposits. Demand deposits. What is money deposited in bank called as demand deposit? What is demand deposit? You can literally get your money on demand. Deposits can be withdrawn on demand. So they are called as demand deposits. Okay. Now, what are the other uses of money that is present in the bank? Can I put the money that is present in the bank for different uses? Yes. There are a couple of really good uses. How sir? You can exchange value. You can exchange money. Even without holding the currency notes. Even without holding the notes in your hand. How? Let us say I need to give somebody money. I will simply issue him a check. What is a check sir? A check is simply a piece of paper. That is going to give instructions to the bank. What kind of instructions am I going to give? to the bank using check. It will say to the bank, give money to such and such fellow whose name will be written in the check, whose name will be written in the check. So a specific amount of money can be given to somebody whose name is written on the check by the fellow who is issuing the check, by the check issuer. So even without actually giving somebody money, I can allow the bank to act as an intermediary so that the bank on behalf of me will be providing money to the other fellow. The bank on behalf of me will be providing the money to the other fellow. Right to so. What next? Here bank is acting as an intermediary. Eliminates the need for money which means here demand deposits are having the essential feature of money even though they are not present as currency notes in hand demand deposits present in the bank are acting as money they can be used for checks against demand deposits demand deposits can be used to issue checks and this can be directly used to settle payments without the need for any cash without the need for any cash. Let me give you a couple of interesting things about a check. So a check has a number in the bottom. This number is called as check number. This number is called as check number. What else sir? If you are having a couple of lines, if you are having a couple of lines on the check in the left hand corner, in the left hand corner, it is called as a crossed check. What is the specialty of a crossed check? In a crossed check, the money can be transferred to somebody who is holding an account in that specific bank. If I want to give money to somebody, then that fellow must have an account in the same bank that I am issuing a check. So, what is the advantage of a crossed check? What is the advantage of what is the other name for a cross check? Account to pay each check. They will put a couple of lines here and say A slash C. What is A slash C? A slash C is account. Account to pay. They will put two lines and write account to pay. The advantage is when you are using a check by crossing it an account pay check. Deposits or withdrawals done with the help of account to pay check can easily be traced. Can easily be traced. If you are giving a uncrossed check to somebody if you are giving an uncrossed check to somebody they can simply use to withdraw the money has cash and you will not be able to trace it back it will be harder to trace it back but in the case of crossed check or account pay check because you are simply changing money from one account to my account to other fellows account it can always be traced back okay sir so Currency and demand deposits are money in the modern economy. Yeah. If there are no banks, then there are no demand deposits. Then no payments can be done with the help of checks. No payments can be done with the help of checks. This is more or less the introduction to this unit. We saw what is barter system, what is double coincidence of wants. What else did we see? We saw the essential nature of money. 
uh, who is giving authority to money indian government who is issuing the money rbi reserve bank of india and we also studied as very small introduction to the banking system of india this topic is a very very interesting topic like uh, come with me we will go through the intricacies of this topic together right tangam uh, if you like this lecture uh, like uh, subscribe to my channel uh, subscribe to our channel yeah <laughs> it's not just my channel subscribe to our channel right uh, promote us in social media let us grow together promote us in social media let us grow together cheers and thank you cheers and thank you